So I have a APC back UPS Pro 1000. That's model number BR1000G. Uh, and it's giving me the no battery detected error. So uh, what happened was the original battery eventually wore out. I replaced it with some individual cells and those eventually wore out. Uh, uh, so when I, when I got some new cells, um, uh, the, the, and put them in the, the batteries tested. Okay. But the connection inside of the device, um, was, was, uh, it seems to have been broken. Uh, and the only way to repair it is to open this thing up and, uh, and, and reattach kind of the, the spade connectors on the internal battery connection. Um, so this video is going to show you how to open up uh, an APC uh, Backups Pro 1000 BR1000G. Um, do not do this if you don't know what you're doing, if you're not an electrician, um, if you don't know what you're doing um, and, and make a wrong move, you could get uh, severely electrocuted uh, or kill yourself. So again, don't try this at home. All right, what we have here are a bunch of batteries for uh, the BR1000G. This is a brand new one from APC from Amazon that's still assembled. It's it's two cells with the uh, with the kind of cartridge kind of adapter in the middle. These are the original cells that came with it, and these are some other cells that I have uh, that I replaced it with over time. This is the cart kind of battery connector adapter that sits between the two cells in this assembly. Um, as you can see, this is a with a new cell. We're, we should be getting about 25.7 volts. Okay, that's what a, that's what a new one will look like. Uh, these these old dead cells might be showing a volt or two, pretty much nothing. Uh, pretty much uh, nothing. Um, and these are slightly newer. These are showing one and a half, maybe two volts. Two volts here about two volts. Yeah, two volts. So these are dead. So, uh, the original cells, um, that I'd kind of dismantled, you can kind of tell they've expanded a bit. It's kind of tough to see here, um, which is a sign that these things are kind of ready to be disposed of. Um, do not throw these out, bring them to a place that recycles, uh, lead acid batteries. This is the, the battery cell connector that, that joins the two separate cells and connects them to the UPS unit. Um, there's two spade connectors in there, uh, and they're kind of faintly labeled black and red. Uh, and so one battery goes on this side, and they're kind of connected in series, and one battery goes on this side. As you can kind of see, they're taped up here. So I replaced the original batteries with these uh, and hooked them up on this thing. The problem was one of the spade connectors in there um, wasn't, uh, wasn't, was kind of loose and wasn't getting connected in the, in the UPS unit. And so what I did was use some, uh, some epoxy to, to kind of firmly seat that in there so they don't wiggle uh, and they stay straight, true, uh, and easier to connect in the unit. Um, the, the prices on these have come down a bit. So it, it just, you know, it, it might just be easier to buy two cells pre-assembled uh, but if you can get good deals on good batteries uh, to buy them separately and reassemble the battery, the you know the 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 the, the, the reassemble the power source yourself, then go ahead. How this cell connects to the UPS? There are two kind of spade connections like this: one for uh, one for positive, one for negative. And then in the UPS unit, there's a, a kind of a female end like, that looks like this for each side: one for positive, one for negative. And they literally just kind of force in like that. Um, I think, I personally think this is a very cheap, crude, and non-reliable way for these things to connect. Um, and that's, and because of how, uh, you know, how unprecise this connection is, that's why my, my battery cart uh, kind of got deformed. And that's also how my UPS got deformed. Uh, so next I'm going to show you how to take apart your BR1000G uh, UPS uh, backups pro 1000 and uh, and repair that connector as well as a few other things inside So the first thing we want to do if you're taking apart one of these things Obviously unplug it make sure it's completely discharged There are large capacitors in here that can still hold a charge and electrocute you uh, Again, do not disassemble one of these things unless you know what you're doing or you're an electrician because this could shock and kill you 
Um, obviously, again, unplug it, remove the battery. All right, battery comes out. Again, there's only one way this can go in based on where, where these guides are. Um, it shouldn't, it will not go in the other way. These guides just, they won't line up. So if you, put, if you assemble this battery correctly, um, there's only one way that connector will go in there. There's one screw right here that needs to come out. And there are six screws on the back. So kind of top, you know, bottom, middle, top. So we'll remove those and I'll show you what we do next. So we've got our side screw removed that was under the battery compartment door. We've got our six screws removed from the back. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, so you can see the back kind of easily comes off a bit, but it's still attached by a bunch of power connections, of course. Um, but there's still a lot holding this thing together. Um, and the next thing that has to come off is this front panel. Um, so what you're going to need for this, um, as what I've done here is I've pre-marked where there are those plastic kind of catches uh, to, because uh, I've, I've taken this apart before, where, where you kind of have, there's, there's just no screw. You're going to have to carefully pry these things up with a plastic pry bar. So there's, there's two on the bottom, uh, two right up here, right above the logo, two right here, right next to APC, and then one up here. And then the whole, the whole thing should just kind of come up and out towards the top. Uh, so to give you some scale, uh, maybe if this will help you, um, if you're taking it apart at home, uh, from the bottom of the unit, from the bottom of the unit up. Yeah, let me go this way, and the ruler will be upside down, but you'll see. Uh, so about two and a half inches up from the bottom. There's uh, there's some from about five and a quarter inches up from the bottom. There's the second pair, and then the last catch is right about here, up at about eight inches from the bottom. Uh, so start with these two on the bottom, and then slowly pry this cover off. And then we'll go on to the next step. All right. So what I've done here is I've got the I've got the front cover pried off again. You you hit these kind of points where there are those clips, and it just kind of lifts off to the front. As you can see, I've I've done this a few times because I really don't care, um, and I've and I've just kind of broken them off. But it it stays on there pretty firm. But this is where those uh, retainer clips are. Um, and you again to do that, you just want to use kind of plastic pry tools are very small screwdrivers to do the least amount of damage possible to the case. Under that, the reason you need to take that off is there are four screws. There's one right up here between these upper buttons, and then there's two, three, and four. So remove these, and then we'll go on to the next step. Once you've removed the four screws on the front, the whole thing is about ready to come off. The only thing holding this side panel on to the rest of the frame are two plastic retainer clips along the top of the unit. I've marked mine here with a whiteout pen, um, and from the front of the unit, the first one is about five and three quarters, and the next one's about ten and a quarter inches from the front. Um, but what you're going to want to do is lift from the bottom of the unit carefully, and the whole thing should just kind of pry off. I've already broken it free, um, but there you go. So just to kind of show you what, what those are, these kind of uh, just kind of plastic clips are, are, holding, are holding the top of the unit together. So once you've, got, once you've got those free, you're inside your UPS. And now we're going to go on to the next step. I'll give you a quick tour of what's in here before I get to how to fix the battery connector, just in case, uh, just in case I have to come back here another time. Um, there's, there are two main boards in here. Um, uh, there's a top board here, which is only held in by two screws, one in the back, and then one kind of right, right there. Um, all of these connectors are very well labeled, so you can kind of see white right there. There's this, this is just a, a, a two-wire clip. Um, you can remove those and these screws, and this whole board comes out after uh, after this wiring harness. Um, under that, the all the main all the main connectors from the from the uh, power distribution on the back. Again, these are all different colors, and they're all labeled on the board. Um, so once you pull off these these spade connectors, um, and, and if, as long as you don't manipulate the wires too much, it's fairly easy to reconnect them. Uh, if you can kind of see down there, it's like black, uh, brown, red, black. Anyway, and the uh, and all the other connectors. So 
The, uh, the bottom board is held in with, uh, with four other small screws. There's uh, one back here, one here, uh, one here, and one here. Um, so you'll, you'll, you'll see. Um, and then once, once you disconnect all those wires, the bottom board, uh, and it, once you disconnect all the wires and remove the four screws, the bottom board will slide up and out. There are a few relays on uh, in here that, that might be the typical electronic component that fails. Uh, made by Omcron, most of them. Uh, here's one right here on this upper board. Uh, I, I actually sent an email to Omcron asking them about the part number because I couldn't find a data sheet for these relays. Um, and they actually said it was a custom part for APC, and they're going to hopefully maybe get back to me as far as more details on this relay and, uh, and, and maybe some specs and help me find a comparable part should I ever have to replace them. Okay. Uh, onto the simple thing, and what's a common problem with these things uh, are, are, is repairing the battery connector. So the battery slides in this way, again with those, with those spade connectors, into, into this little block right here. And if you can see, it kind of like pinches and then pulls up. And here's the battery connector. Again, inside you can see two of those female spade connectors, uh, one for black and one for red. Uh, and what happened on mine is, uh, because they didn't line up perfectly, uh, the black the black connector literally was pushed down into the unit uh, to where I couldn't even see it from the outside. Um, and uh, and there was just no way for the battery to get a connection. So so I really had to disassemble this to, to get it repaired. And again, all I did was push the connector back up to where it belongs. And I went back and added... Uh, if I can turn this thing around, let me move the camera right here. I added some uh, some epoxy to some some good plastic epoxy to uh, really make sure uh, that that connector stays stays in there. Uh, be careful on the adhesive you use. If it's corrosive, it might corrode the uh, copper wires and the insulation, uh, and you don't want to do that. So make sure whatever you're using um, to to make to to repair this connection. Uh, is, a, is a safe connection for it. Um, so once, once all that stuff set, uh, that wire wasn't moving at all, and then it's just a matter of sliding it back in the right way, and, uh, uh, and then your, your, your battery connection is repaired. And so uh, when I slide in this battery, uh, you'll see that it, 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 it makes a pretty smooth connection down here to... Uh, to the receiving end of, of this of this uh, connector, so I'm gonna put everything back together in the reverse order that uh, that I put it in, uh, and then uh, we'll see if this battery connection uh, works. Okay, so we've got the battery put back in, got a good seated connection, got the device plugged in. We're gonna fire it up, see if it detects the battery, and we have a good connection. And it looks like it's detecting battery with a full load, or full charge. No load, because nothing's plugged in here yet. Um, but once the self-test finishes, uh, I think uh, we've got a uh, successfully repaired uh, BR1000G APC UPS. Yep. So we'll get this thing uh, back under my desk. Hope this helps, y'all.